I've never heard such a thing. If you need something, I can order it. Be here in a couple of weeks. Okay. Let's attach the whatchamacallit to the duty. Well, hello, Mr. Marston. How are you? Fine, thank you. How are you? I'm fine, thank you. Did you meet my father? John Marston, this is my father, Drew McFarland. Pleasure to meet you, Mr. Marston. Please. So, my daughter informs me that you're here on some secret mission to uh, remove some undesirables from the county. Something like that. I'm grateful for the hospitality, sir. Well, you know, we've lived here for 30 years now. Came here from the east. The land had never been settled. For 10 years, we fought the Indians. Tough men. And we had outlaws, and we had drought, and we had smallpox, and terrible winters, cholera. I buried more of my children than I raised. Sorry to hear that, sir. I've seen strong men wither and die under that unforgiven sun. That whole herd of cattle take sick and die. But I've never once doubted my life here. No, sir. When I hear about this so-called federal government sending out agents to covertly murder and control people, then I start to worry. I mean, yeah, all right, Williamson is a menace, and men like him are the plague. But isn't a government agent a worse menace? And all that symbolizes, I mean. You may be right, sir. Well, you're a brave man. You're always going to be welcome here. But you tell your friends out east that we don't want to live like that out here. Sneaking around and spying and secret missions. Huh? It's preposterous. Trust me, sir. I agree with you. Good. Well, we won't insult you any further. Come on, Bonnie. We got things to do. Mr. Marston, do you want to join us? It's Daddy's favorite pastime. Apart from political discourse, that is. What is? Breaking in horses. Come on. I hear you're a pretty decent rider, for a city dweller, that is. <laughs> <laughs> you're going to need this, Mr. Marston. Right, now you got some rope on your belt. Let's see if we can't wrangle some horses. sure have some interesting theories on what the government's doing, sir. They ain't theories, Mr. Marston. I saw the telegram Marshall got from Blackwater. It ain't exactly a state secret that sent you. Well, is he wrong? I saw those men from the train. The government can go to hell if you ask me. Those sons of bitches would steal a coin off a dead man's eyes. Mr. Marston! He's right. Now, I don't know much about politics. Please, Paul, can we just enjoy the ride? I know ride? we're only as free as they say we are. Power's like a drink. The more you have, the more you want. There are few men who can handle it. There's certain things in this country
country a woman could do much better, if you ask me. I ain't gonna argue with that, Miss McFarland. Father. I'm glad. He's quite a character. You have a good life here. A life I want. For me and my family, I mean. We don't have a lot anymore. You have enough. It's one that gets so many folks in trouble. It'll sap your spirit and make you poor. But it's straight. And it's decent. There's no better night's sleep than after an honest day's work. It's no wonder you look so tired, then. Some deck must be shy of Joker, Miss McFarland. That was fun! I think you could be a fine rancher one day, if you can bear to stop killing people for a living. Sure. Come on! Well done, Mr. Marston. These are fine horses. 
horses. Hey, Bonnie. Amos was saying some horses been spotted somewhere outside of Armadillo. Let's go, Mr. Marston. We can really do with those horses. No rest for the wicked. Let's see if we can track down that other herd of horses. You never did tell me why you were never married. Aside from the snobbery, that is. You sure ask a lot. I'm just surprised, that's all. You must have been quite a catch. The fact that you're talking in the past says it all. No, that's not what I mean. You must have had some suitors, that's all I'm saying. Some, I suppose. Here and there. A ranch in the middle of Hennigan's stead ain't really the place to find a husband. Amos, he's a little, well, you know, countryfied. Where'd you get your airs and graces, Miss McFarland? From a couple of chief governesses Paul hired to save us from being savages. I'd like to talk about more than just cattle and chickens sometimes, that's all. And after my brother left, it was up to me to become the man of the ranch. He'd never admit it, but my paw's a lot frailer than he looked. You're worth two of any man I know, miss. I'll try to take that as a compliment. Come on. Come on! 
now. Relax now. Nearly there. Hold on. Steady. I got you now. Nearly there. I'm in trouble here. It's all right. Thanks for your help today, Mr. Marston. We got some fine horses. You know, why don't you keep that stallion as your own, as a thank you from all of us? Thank you, ma'am. He's a fine animal.
Howdy, friend. I didn't know anyone lived out here. Whoa! Now you can't rob the place now, can you? Now get! Friendly old bastard, ain't you? I don't need me no friends, friend. We all need friends, old timer. We die alone, but we live among men. You know, I was interested in moving out this way with my family. Would you be willing to sell me a parcel of land? We wouldn't even have to speak or nothing. Land's too dry for farming. Bandits run all the cattle off. Why you want this land? I guess I just like the scenery. Well, I don't know. Maybe for $200, I could give you the deed to this land, find myself a place up in Blackwater. Although I never could stand the people down there. No, sir. It's a bargain at twice the price. You're really not helping. Howdy, miss. Uh, what are you doing out here? Um, I'm thinking. Have I seen you before? Oh, uh, yes, I think so. On the train from Blackwater, perhaps. Yeah. Yeah, you were talking with the preacher. Yes, sir, I was. I don't know if it's so safe out here, miss. Oh, Jenny. You can call me Jenny. Uh, uh, all right. Uh, I'm safe because I, I have faith. So uh, faith can move mountains. That's the whole point. You're trying to move a mountain? Oh, no. Uh, I can't do anything. But with faith, I can achieve great things. I know that. I know it. You want me to take you back into town, ma'am? You seem kind of unwell. Oh, I, I get such clarity out here. I see things purely. The world is so beautiful. And full of things that'll kill you. <laughs> including illness. Nothing's gonna kill me, sir. Well, take care then. Miss Jenny. 
Miss Jenny. Don't look like the Almighty's much inclined to help you out here. I was kind of worried about you, so I brought you some medicine. Oh, oh heavens. Oh, praise you, Lord. I knew you'd save me. Excuse me? You see, it was only through his will that you were ordered to save me. Tell me, <coughs> were there angels in your vision? Jenny, uh, can I take you back into town? Praise you, Savior. I knew you'd save me. <coughs> Will you come with me? Oh, I'm fine here, mister. I, I'm in heaven. <coughs> heaven. <coughs> You okay, lady? My husband's missing. These bastards won't do anything. But he's a good man. He don't drink nor lay with whores. And he's been, he's been missing for three days. Let me guess. You went missing up in the hills? How did you know, mister? Just a guess. If I find him, I'll bring him back to you. But people seem to go missing up there. Got much money, and I'm in the family way again. As I said, I'll do what I can. <laughs>
Yes, sir. Some city fella just attacked me and broke my leg. What? He broke my leg. Some city fella. Guy got kind of creepy on me, and then he got violent. When? Just now. Uh, he ran off that way. Can't have gone too far. If I find him, I'll bring him back this way. Thank you, mister. <laughs> Take me back to that man! Please! I'll do anything! This is a nightmare! Oh, my good lord. Please get that man away from me. Uh, uh. Hey, fella. <laughs> you broke this oh, no. poor fool's leg, mister. This maniac tried to eat me. We got cannibals in these here hills. Please help me. What? Please. Fella's got to eat now. Fella's got to eat. Uh, <laughs> save me from this freak, please. Please. <laughs> Quiet now. Don't make me give you a beating. <laughs> Just stay calm. Thank you. 
Something such as killing a man becomes mundane in this world. Sir! Howdy. The only reason to do this job is a free force to get down to the whorehouse. Hello. Thanks a lot.
I spent my life proving fools like you wrong. Welcome to the Armadillo Saloon, finest drinking establishment in the West. Can I get some whiskey? There's something odd about that Jeff Murphy. I declare, this one just dribbled out of your mouth count for an anecdote in these parts. Saloon is a great place to get to know everyone. How do you do? Armadillo's on the up. Give me the same again. Oh, ah, you ain't up. Friend. The Lord is gone. Much obliged. A man like you needs a woman like me. And again. Paint your tonsils with that. Yeah, this crowd out Answer to a higher authority. Thank Are you. you lonely? I hope that was accidental. Well, you want to spend some time with me? Lady. Well, aren't you a naughty boy? How do you do? I was told some dark I heard someone bag that giant mountain lion in a bottle. Forgive me, sir. Hey, man, I'm trying to hold. All the same, they just want armadillo real. Go. Cougar with balls like pitchforks. He's right over that bend. Sure. 
so long. Goodbye I'm now. so sorry, sir. Fornicates with China. Shame. I beg your that pardon, sir. Thing don't concern me. I guess I should probably go. Me. This is a society in only the loosest sense of the word. Get back, everybody! <laughs> ah. <Whoa>. <laughs> <laughs> hey, 
Ain't nothing you can do now. <clears throat> I'm not some steer you can simply rope away. <laughs> hey now, there's no need to get your cords in a knot. Tough one, ain't you? I sure could use some help, partner. Name's Errol Hewitt. The damn Bollard gang stolen my family's herd. I gotta get them back. They're all I got. I got food and food. Hold it! In God's name?
move, and you're a dead man!
pray for you. I got most of the horses secure and the chicken. Well, thank you, Amos, but it's the herd I'm worried about. I know. They're scattered all over the valley and beyond. The weather is coming in real fast. So what do you suggest, Amos? We leave the herd out there to be scattered by the storm and ourselves left here to die without a livelihood? Can I help? No, miss. If the men get caught out in that storm, they're going to die. And if we lose our herd, we'll all die, you stupid man. Doesn't sound like we're left with much of a choice then. Come on, Amos. Round up your men. Let's get the herd. Dang. We don't have much time. Come on. That sky don't look good. I'm starting to think somebody up there is conspiring against me. We have two herds out grazing in different pastures. We'll need to merge them and bring them all back. I think we can handle that. The cows get real ornery in bad weather. It's more work, but I'll show you how to deal with them. We're not going to be able to hear each other in this rain. Just make sure you don't lose sight of me. Come on!
thank God! We only lost a couple, I think. Right, let's round up those stragglers. All right, let's get him back to the ranch before anything else happens. one day. to ride the land and was supposed to be back hours ago. I don't know. The ranch hands have been out looking, but so far they found nothing. Well, come on. Let's go look for him. Come 
on. Let's see if we can find the old goat. him to be away for so long. Don't worry. We'll find him. He's not as young as he used to be. What if he's hurt himself? Your father can still handle himself just fine, Miss McFarland. You're slowing us like down. An You're probably right, but I can't. It's a bad idea to split up right now. Don't you have any brothers or sisters, Miss McFarland? I had six brothers, but five of them died, either from sickness or foolish choices. And the other one? He left for the East and never came back. Must be getting on for 10 years ago now. He's a high and mighty banker in New York, according to his last letter. He should be here, helping you and your pa. I don't want his help. He can live his life any way he wants. But when I see those city fellers coming in on the railway, all dressed up like a sore toe, I fear a little for his soul. Look, I think I see someone. Nothing nice. Wrestlers, I guess. Maybe the Baller twins, that bunch. Now, you head back to the ranch right now and fetch your wagon. Yes, sir. Marshall, you watch after her. I'll do that, sir. Please stay close. Hey! Whoa! What could have happened to those poor men? And their horses were dead, too. I think we should get back there as soon as we can. Who could have done something like that? Your boss seemed to have an idea who it was. Let's just do what he says and get the wagon. Stay with me. I've got a bad yeah. feeling about this. He did it! 
Sure know how to handle yourself. Thanks, Marston. Yes, John, thanks. You well, you saved the ranch. If you'll excuse me, I, I've got chores to attend to. Hey, wh hold on a second over there. Sincerely, John. Thank you. Well, did all I could, Miss McFarland. Sorry about all the damage. That gang seems to really want you out of here. Yeah, well. My father fought Indians. I scarcely think we're gonna be frightened by some white trash. White trash can be pretty frightening. Well, they don't frighten me. Good. John, my family owes you a great debt. I think you got enough debt. You saved my life. All I ask of you is this. If I get back home and get my farm started back up, you'll sell me some cattle. I prefer doing business with people I know. Of course, Mr. Marston. It'd be my pleasure. Um, well, you get some rest. I've got to go see how my father's bearing up.
You got the deed? Yep. Here it is. Yeah. Oh, there's blood on this deed, Marston. I didn't tell you to kill the poor old man. Here, take the money. That old bastard's got a son living up in Blackwater. So I'd be real careful not to publicize this sale too much. Unless killing entire families is a pleasure of yours, of course. Good luck with the property, McAllister. Yeah. Push me now. Don't think you'll be needing this. God damn it! Oh, shit! I need to find more ammunition! alive, this would be adultery. John. John Marston. Do I know you? I hope so. I seem to know you. I'm pretty good at remembering faces. Are you? Do you remember Hattie McCourt's face? Who? She was a girl Dutch Vanderlyn shot in the head on that raid on the ferry a few years back. Same one you got shot on. Pretty girl until her eye was hanging out by a thread of tendon, and her brain was plastered over a wall. Not really. Then why would you remember me, friend? You've forgotten far more important people than me. What's your game, friend? I don't have a game, John. Listen, sometimes I just wish I'd known more about life. Wish I'd had better guidance. A friend of mine is drunk as a skunk in the saloon on Thieves Landing. I think he's gonna be unfaithful to his dear wife. 
Why don't you head over there and see if you can advise him how best to proceed? Who do you think I am? I know what you are, John. Just if you've got the time, friend.
Let's get this charmer to tumbleweed. Yeah. This sorry son of a bitch so important to them. Norman Deke, Williamson's right hand man. In other words, a glorified errand you boy. You wait, Marshal. I'll be back for you. Bill Standards have slipped. We already filled you with lead once, you ugly Deke's bastard. Deke's the kind of man who's mean enough to be second in command, but too cowardly and stupid to ever be a leader. Don't ever use that line near your deputies. Hurry up, Marshal. We gotta get to Bonnie. this place we're headed. Tumbleweed, a lonely godforsaken place. Some people say it's haunted. It was quite a town back in its day. Then they built the railroad to Armadillo and went clean past Tumbleweed. And that was that. Pretty soon everybody had up and left. Now it's just thieves, smugglers, and bandits. Scum like Deke here. Oh, popular spot for lynchings, too. Let's try to avoid that if we can, Marshal. Yeah. Come on. I just hope you're not taking advantage of the McFarlands, Marston. They saved my life. They gave me food and bed when they had no idea who I was. I owe them more than I can ever repay. That's just they've been through a lot. Well, they're both vulnerable in different ways. I wouldn't have been running in and out of a burning barn to save their horses otherwise. Oh, I know you helped, just like you helped me. But you got your reasons for doing it. It's no secret why I'm here, Marshal. I told you the very first time I walked into your office. I trust you. It's just all this business with Blackwater and Williamson and the past. I don't know. Sometimes it's hard not to have doubts. I understand. I never planned to be in the lawman business neither. Go. How is this mess supposed to turn out? Sending an outlaw to do the work of a lawman. That's madness. Ain't much difference between the two, as far as I can tell. There have to be rules, Marston. Even you must understand that. It's easy to make up rules. But they ain't much use if people don't understand why. Like my son, if I tell him not to do something, he'll do it anyway, just to spite me. If I punish him, he resents me for it. But if I show him why it's wrong, at least he has reason not to do it again. That's nonsense. Without laws, we're nothing more than animals. Just look at Deke here. Go to hell! Man has worked hard at civilization. Your boy steps out of line, you whack him. He does it again, whack him harder. You're a good man, Marshal, and I respect what you're trying to do. What I've seen since I've arrived here, the law ain't really working. Criminals are like weeds, Marston. Quick as you stomp one out, another one sprouts up in its place. It's the nature of places. You know that as well as I do. The problem with laws is everybody ain't the same. And why should a bunch of rich university boys in the East get to decide how a man in Armadillo should live his life? Yeah. Well, maybe you're right about that. Lots of places, I suppose. I've been living up on a little farm in West Elizabeth for the past few years. No, I mean, what's your nationality? I'm Irish. Myself. You're about as Irish as I am Scottish. I am Irish, you so much. I can't wait for you to meet the boy. Only a coward hides behind a pig. Be exchanging the prisoner for Bonnie in the middle of town. Keep your eyes open. I sincerely doubt these scum plan to play fair. Fair my ass. You bet. Besides, Norm here is going to be my shield, ain't you, Norm? <laughs> It'd be my pleasure. Lead Deke into town. We'll be right behind you. I'm sure it's been nice for the boys to have a whore to play with. I hear those rancher girls like it in the rear. Maybe she won't want to go home. She been fucked so good. Why don't you save some of that breath from breathing? Get these ropes off me, boys! Wait, where's Bonnie, you bastards? <laughs> Trusting son of a bitch, ain't you? <laughs> 
Where's Bonnie? I thought we had a deal. <laughs> Are you okay? I'm fine now, Mr. Marston. Thank you. Thank you. <coughs> what the hell took you so long, you stupid man? Well, you weren't exactly helping me. If you think I'm gonna lower myself by making a joke about being all tied up, you got another thing coming. Come on. I need it more than you now.
I doubt you'll be needing this.
searching around the belts for a few plants I'm allowed on. Here's the deal. Whichever one of us gets back here first with the right plants wins on the bet. All right, you're on.
happen to these folks? Let's see what you got. And I can tell you, with no uncertainty, that miracle cures are no laughing matter. I bid you <laughs> good day, sir. Uh, <laughs> oh, Mr. Marston, good to see you. How have you been keeping? I'm well, Mr. Uh, Mr. West Dickens. Nigel West Dickens of East Cheap, London, New Waverly, New York, and Armadillo, New Austin. At your service. At my service. At everyone's service, at the service of science, of knowledge, of life. Uh, <laughs> how are your wounds? Hmm? Oh, oh, uh, much, much better. But then they would be. Mm -hmm. Would be? I know a cure for all ailments, Mr. Marston. Ah, I'm sure you do. And I'm sure for just $2 an ounce, I could live forever. Oh, but for you, sir, I'd do a bulk discount rate of $1.95 an ounce, <laughs> as long as you buy 100 ounces or more. That's a lot of immortality. Oh, give it up, old man. That's Mr. West Dickens to you, boy. Give it up, old man. <laughs> um, listen, Marston, I'm broke. But this stuff is good. It works. 
I need a healthy young man like you. <laughs> Come along, let's ride over to my newest customer at Ridgewood, and I'll explain while we go. Okay. <laughs> All right, John, let us make haste for Ridgewood Farm. I heard about you, Mr. West Dickens. And I about you, John Marston. Hoodwinking the weak, gullible out of their hard-earned money. My dear boy, it is you who is gullible, if I may be so bold, for heeding such ill-informed scuttlebutt. Get back on the wall! We'll have nothing left by the time we get to Ridgewood. You're as full of wind as a horse with a collar. I have been blessed with the gift of language, and for that I will not apologize. But the West Dickens elixirs speak for themselves. If my tonic is such a sham, how do you explain the fine battle with which you find me? Last time you saw me, I was knocking at death door. You should thank the doctor for that. And I reckon you were acting it up worse than it was. Act I can, John. A more convincing fellow there has never been. And so shall you. A fair Iago or Cassio. I don't like the sound of this. Showmanship, John. The flourish. The bow. We are operating in a competitive marketplace. Our product must stand out. And how does this involve me? We're going to use your God-given talents to our advantage. I'm really starting to regret this. I'll drop this. you off at the outskirts of Ridgewood. That way, it won't look like we came together. Once I'm set up, some nonchalantly into the crowd that is sure to be Eventually, I will call you up to try my top. After extolling the virtues, I will have you perform a few feats of wonder to amaze and impress the free. Such as? Oh, nothing out of the ordinary for a man in your line of work, I assure you. So, it is all a shame. No, oh, no, just a little innocent ballyhoo to miss the wheels of Enterprise, that's all. You hop out here, John. Follow me in on foot. I'll see you. souls of uh, Chola Springs, uh, gather round, gather round. Uh, do you suffer from rheumatism, lumbago, acute chronic sciatic, uh, uh, neurologic or inflammatory pain? Well, I represent the only company that makes the genuine article that cures headaches, neuralgia, uh, earache, toothaches, backache, swelling, sprains, sore chests, swelling of the throats, contracted cords and muscles, anxieties and ravaged nerves, stiff joints, wrenches, dislocations, cuts and bruises, and it adds vitality and vigor to the healthy man. <laughs> well, can you prove it, old man? Oh, I'm sure there's some customer here who could prove the qualities of its by take a drink right now you sir come up here step right up that's the spirit ladies and gentlemen pay close attention this poor wretched volunteer entirely unknown to me will demonstrate the effects of dr west dickens own patent tonic 
Be you a cowpoke or athlete, this miraculous elixir developed with the wisdom of the East keeps the muscles supple and relaxes the cords. It loosens the joints and gives a feeling of youth and vigor to the whole system. Not possible, I hear you say. Well, doubt no longer. Faith can move mountains, but I ask not for faith. I am a man of science, and today, science will be vindicated. Your eyesight is greatly improved, is that not so, friend? If you say so. That's right, it is. You heard him. What a good sport you are, sir. Now, gaze over yonder at that porch. If you squint, you may just be able to make out the skull that's hanging there. Go ahead, friend. Shoot that skull and demonstrate the miraculous eyesight you now possess. Sight of an eagle, granted by imbibing Dr. West Dickens' own patent tonic. Anybody can make that shot. This man is a fraud. If your eye is so damn sharp, why don't you try shooting my hat out of the air? My friends, our test case has been challenged to shoot a gentleman's hat out of the sky above our heads. You can fool these people, but you ain't fooling me. Right. Let's just see how sharp you is with a moving target. Get ready. He's about to throw it. You ready to get it, Barry? Such an eye. Behold the power of the elixir. Look out of the sky. Hey! Hey! What? You think you can put a hole in a man's hat and just walk away, do you? They well, don't work like that around here, mister. Come on! Are you a man or not? A challenge of battle has been offered to our volunteer. Let the battle Ooh. commence! Hit me then, God damn it! I'm taking this nice and Wait, slow. there's still time! You're making a big mistake! There it is, skeptics and dissenters! Irrefutable proof! Do not let this opportunity pass you by! Look, he's over there! Go get this him! This ends now! Watch out! He's got a gun! Who the hell do you think you are? You ain't leaving here alive! Shot, dear boy! The kind of deadly accuracy that can only be afforded by the West Dickens elixir. Come, I have plenty for all. Yeah, no harm in trying one bottle, I suppose. Well, I think that went kind of well, don't you? I'm just glad that my normal job involves either chasing after cattle or murderers. Not the likes of you, mister. Don't be like that. Now, if you'll excuse me, I'd like to say my goodbyes, head on back to the real world. Uh, 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 wait, sir. I, I've been thinking about your predicament, and uh, I think I may have an idea. I've been thinking I could be your cunning Odysseus. Beware of the Greeks burying gifts, sir. Mm -hmm. Williamson had better beware. We will make them into Trojans. I don't rightly get you. I want you to go and see my old friend, Seth. Uh, he can come across as a little curious, but I'm sure you two will get on. Uh, he's uh, most often found at Coote's Chapel. He's very devout. Why see him? Because between him and me, we can get those gates to open for you, and you can walk right in, just like in Homer's great Trojan yarn!
Good morning to you, dear sir. Howdy. Mr. Wilkins got a damn tiger up in his...